Hi everybody, hope you're all doing well. Now business is not always easy. So in this lesson, I want to share some really useful idioms and phrases for talking about difficult and challenging situations. Welcome back to English for Professionals. I'm Derek and I'm here with another short lesson for you busy people. Before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe to my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new lesson. And check out my new online course, Make Small Talk with Confidence. With over three hours of interactive video, lots of great interactive quizzes, more than 50 pages of PDF study and practice sheets and almost two hours of audio downloads. The link to join the course is in the description below. And now let's get started with the lesson. Our first example is clear the air. Clear the air. So imagine there has been a conflict or bad feeling between two or more people. To clear the air means to openly discuss the problem or conflict in order to make it better. Let's take a look at this idiom in context. Daniel and Sonia are colleagues, but they've had a lot of arguments recently. In yesterday's team meeting, they had a very big argument and as a result, there's a bad atmosphere in the office. Pamela is their boss and she decides to talk to Sonia. Have you spoken to Daniel about what happened in yesterday's meeting? No, I haven't. Well, I think you should. This has been going on too long and you both need to clear the air. I know, you're right. I'll talk to him today. Let's practice reading the dialogue together. You take Pamela's role and I'll take Sonia's. As soon as the dialogue appears, you can begin. No, I haven't. I know, you're right. I'll talk to him today. Up next we have get off to a rocky start. Get off to a rocky start. If something gets off to a rocky start, it experiences problems or obstacles at the beginning. Obstacles are things which get in your way and stop you from making progress. And now for some context. Carlos and Anita are colleagues. They're having a conversation when Carlos asks Anita about the project she's working on. So, how's the project going? Well, we got off to a rocky start, but we're making progress now. Oh, what happened? Well, there was some conflict within the team, but we've sorted that out. I see. Well, best of luck with it. Thanks. Now let's practice reading the dialogue together. You take Anita's role and I'll take Carlos's. This time, I start. So, how's the project going? Oh, what happened? I see. Well, best of luck with it. And the next example is not out of the woods. Not out of the woods. We use this idiom to say that even though a situation has improved, it's still difficult or problematic. Let's see this one in context. Elena and Fabian are managers at different companies. They sometimes call each other to chat about business and share ideas. So, how's business? Pretty tough at the moment, to be honest. Really? Yeah, the crisis has hit us pretty hard, so our main focus at the moment is on reducing costs. Oh, I see. We've made a lot of progress in the last six to eight weeks, but we're not out of the woods yet. 
Right. Well, I hope you can turn it around soon. To turn something around means to make a situation change in a positive direction. Now let's practice reading the dialogue together. You take Fabian's role and I'll take Eleanor's. So, how's business? Really? Oh, I see. Right. Well, I hope you can turn it around soon. Up next we have If All Else Fails. If All Else Fails. This is used to say that there's still something you can do or try if all other options or plans are unsuccessful. And now for some context. Julia and Max are a couple and they own a small business. The business is in trouble and they need to borrow some money. What are we going to do? Well, we should contact all of the banks first to see if we can get a loan. And if all else fails, I'll ask my parents for money. OK, I'll start with our main bank. Now let's practice reading the dialogue together. You take Max's role and I'll take Julia's. What are we going to do? OK, I'll start with our main bank. And the next example is in over your head. In over your head. If you're in over your head, it means you're involved in something that's too difficult for you to handle. Time for some context. Ken and Marie are company executives. They're talking about Roberto, who was recently promoted to head of marketing. I think it was too early to promote Roberto. I agree. He's doing his best, but he's in over his head. Yes, unfortunately. Should we give him more time or start looking at other options? I'd like to give him more time, but I'm not sure we can afford it. It seems like he's not ready for this level of responsibility yet. Let's practice reading the dialogue together. You take Marie's role and I'll take Ken's. I think it was too early to promote Roberto. Yes, unfortunately. Should we give him more time or start looking at other options? And our final example in this lesson is to pull the plug. Pull the plug, which means to stop or prevent a plan or activity from continuing, especially by deciding not to give it any more money. Let's take a look at it in context. Gerhard and Alec are colleagues who work in different departments. They're making small talk when Gerhard asks about the ZFT project. Are you still working on the ZFT project? No, the management team decided to pull the plug. Really? Why? Well, to be honest, it wasn't very well planned in the beginning and it just wasn't worth the effort. I see. And for the final time in this lesson, let's practice reading together. You take Alec's role and I'll take Gerhard's. Are you still working on the ZFT project? Really? Why? I see. So that brings us to the end of another short lesson. If you know any other useful idioms or phrases for talking about difficult or challenging situations, please let us know in the comments. Or if you want to try one of the examples from this lesson in your own sentence, 
let me know in the comments. All of the examples from this lesson are included in the description below. If you like the lesson, hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already and join my email list. Every two weeks I send out my free vocabulary email with additional business English, words from the news and everyday English for you to learn. The link is in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.